move on to that we went to quickly talk about this picture that's kind of gone i would say semi-viral that consists of kim kardashian and michelle lammy i'm assuming in either michelle lammy's home or kim's home because you know at the time when kim and kanye were together kanye was inspired by a lot of the same interior designers and architects and furniture designers that rick owens essentially loves right think brutalism think maximalism think um you know uh, think stoicism think minimalism all those kind of notes kind of kim, kanye was also a big fan of so i'm not too sure this could either be kim's house or it could be I give him Michelle Halami's home, but regardless, what you see is a picture here of Kim and Michelle Lamy looking very soapy in the bathroom while Kim sits there afloat at the top, consist considerably wearing head to toe what looks like to me to be Rick. You got massive Rick jewelry here. You probably got some Skims underwear there, maybe, um, and a uh, Rick Owens dress that looks like it's been torn to pieces. That looks absolutely incredible, and. It looks like to me, considering what's been happening with Balenciaga, this could be a subtle indication that her team have decided to drop and abandon whatever collaboration or whatever sort of relationships they once had with Balenciaga and move over to doing stuff with Rick Owens. It could be, not too sure. The picture itself, if I'm not mistaken, is for the launch of Sister Magazine, which I'm a big fan of, which are now going to be launching a beauty-based mag. Um, issue one is due to come out or has already come out. I think it's got Michelle Lamy on the cover. She's definitely the cover star because she's all over their Instagram. But that's essentially what they're trying to do going forward. So this could just be a one-away shoot. That doesn't mean anything. But considering how big Kim is and how powerful she is and the influence she has on the industry and whatnot, and you know just the brand that she is in general, you don't normally think these things would happen out of the blue. They're not spontaneous. There's always a bit of calculation involved. So I can't imagine this is just a shoot for shoot's sake. This feels like the soft introduction or entry into Kim coming into a quote unquote Rick era, which would be quite a funny to see play out because if anything, even though some of the lengths may be similar-ish, the proportions are nowhere near similar to what she was wearing at Balenciaga for the most part. The aesthetic is completely different. Um, the you know the codes are different. I'd say for the most part, the fan base is probably less forgiving than maybe Balenciaga is. They're not as cynical. Um, they're not as shit postery. So that will probably lose a bit of its edge. And maybe even with that though, I think sensuality wise and maybe sex appeal wise, because I feel like you know maybe it's gross to say, but I feel like the best way to dress Kim in general, in my opinion, or the, the way she looks the best is definitely when it's mostly sex led. That's kind of how she came into the game, unfortunately, but she does have a really good way of kind of oozing that through pictures, even though she kind of, you know, maybe comes across as maybe having a bit of a dull personality, I think. So dressing her in this way, maybe it suits her better than wearing, you know, really big and gargantuan Balenciaga, you know, outfits that maybe would suit somebody who's a bit taller, a little bit more skinny, or maybe looking a bit more European in there for sex appeal, where they basically claim their sex appeal from the roll up cigarettes that they, you know, smoke outside the galleries. But I think this actually does suit her. When I think of some of the women's looks and runway looks that come through down the runway, you know, there's a lot of layering, there's a lot of kind of pieces on top of pieces. If you strip back some of the stuff and, you know, do some tailoring here or there, it could probably suit her quite a lot. But the thing that I find really funny about this is that this is obviously a clear attempt to distance for themselves from Balenciaga, which is funny because, you know, fashion people, especially when you're in the moment, you legitimately feel like you're the center of the universe. Like you're the only person that matters and everyone around you makes you feel like you're the only person that matters also. But then if you go cold or if you hear a bit of controversy, suddenly no one really cares about you anymore and you're currently not the person that matters and things slowly change so in my head i feel like it would be far more impressive actually it'd show a far better mark of loyalty and will definitely go a long way to prove hey i'm my own person i can do what the hell i want i'm not affected by the whims and the emotions and the temporary outrage culture nature of people in public i'm gonna stick with balenciaga and i'm gonna stick with them though because i like what they do we've got this good collaboration they pay me well they treat me well and this is the brand essentially if you think about it even though she's got a partnership with dng and you don't hear much about it right kim and i think the whole family does anybody with dusty gabbana i'm pretty sure they paid for someone's who they paid the wedding for might be corny right i think they paid for the wedding or that one but there's a collaboration and a partnership with those guys involved but you don't really hear much about it. i'm not too sure if it's like a purposeful thing done on the kardashian side of things because you know dng have their own scandals they're going through you don't want to be associated with them too closely but you know 
you'd still say Balenciaga definitely were the people, Demna specifically was the one who definitely gave Kim the legitimacy in the scene in the industry going forward. It's so apart from obviously Kanye, who kind of held her hand and kind of gave her the intro, but the kind of next step, it was definitely more of a Demna thing. So it would be a far greater mark of loyalty and friendship to actually say, hey, no, I'm sticking with you. I know everyone's kind of saying you're essentially, you know, trafficking kids under the guise of fashion, or whatever it may be. I'm going to stick with you regardless, even though I have four children of my own. I'm going to put my morals and principles to one side. I'm not going to draw a line on the side, and I'm going to stick with you because you're my friend, quote unquote. But that's not how the industry works. The industry is cold. The industry is um, without any emotion. It doesn't care about anything you're going through, and it's not personal. And it just moves on. So he's going through what he's going through. He's in his darkest probably period as a designer. You know, there's people making articles about lots of flipping of Volkova being a flipping being a satanist or something which is crazy considering how much of a fanboy i am of her work and her styling and the early demina vet monday so that's been crazy to see but in his darkest moments when he needs his friends and family they all abandon him apart from kanye right which is probably the only person you don't want to put on you in public now considering all the things that he's saying and how radioactive he is but it just shows you man like the scene and industry just moves on demina was legitimately the number one flipping person at one time and you heard no defense of anything concerning those um, editorials that were put in or those campaign shoots that were put out with the kids or the BDSM toys. You heard no real defense from anybody in the industry regarding with the document strewn on the table with that campaign featuring Nicole Kidman. All those people that were jacking him off, you know, at the back of the flipping, um, you know, at the end of the shows, behind the scenes, uh, behind whatever, maybe behind the curtain, they're nowhere to be found now. In his darkest moments, where are they? No, it's be found. It just shows that you should really enjoy the scene for what it is. Maybe cultivate a community of people around you that are legitimately your real friends, but never mistaken all the press and the hype and attention you're getting from these media people as love or as affection or as a sign of loyalty, friendship, whatever it may be, because it's just temporary. You are com you are you are beneficial and you have some value to them in that moment maybe for those few years, but once you have exhausted your use, they'll move on to the next person quite quickly. As you can see from this picture, this is effectively moving on. This is like you break up with somebody and then they post a picture of themselves in someone's house with their feet, you know what I mean? Clearly showing you, hey, I've moved on now, see you later. And this is clearly a see you later type of moment. But still, as a Rick fanboy, I'm still eager to see what happens from it, what we get from it. Um, I'm eager to see the evolution of Rick because I feel like now it's funny because I feel like most hood girls, especially in America, they love wearing those double um, sole bumper sole flipping Ricks that I have or just a regular Ramones or, you know, I don't see many. Yeah, actually Geo Boxkis as well in the pink. So clearly Rick has basically penetrated parts of, I would say, normal people, you know, style and sense of fashion, which is kind of cool to see. So it'll be interesting to see if Kim wears it if it then but you know kind of pierces through the consciousness of regular schmegular you know um vanilla flipping coffee women type people i wonder if they're going to be fans of it also because it's quite challenging to wear especially some of the women's stuff even the stuff nowadays it's not the most easiest it's kind of fashion with a capital f which is maybe why blinchaka did so well in general if you think about it right it's mostly streetwear type regular people type clothing right button-ups hoodies jackets um leather jackets and stuff it's nothing really too outrageous in terms of fashion so there's maybe a couple of the shirts and jumpers that had other stows sewed onto them or arms cut off cool but in terms of the silhouettes they were kind of you know stuff that you're familiar with but Rick is all really different, right? He drapes all the stuff on the body. There's lumps and bumps sticking out of places. There's, you know, mesh that looks like it's been ripped open, as you can see there from that picture. There's chunky jewelry that looks like something that came off of a, a bolt on a monster truck. There's all these interesting things that appear, and I find it all kind of interesting to look at. But again, as a Rick fanboy, I'm going to eagerly anticipate what happens when they do eventually launch it. And I'm sure it's going to be absolutely fantastic anyway going forward and i cannot cannot wait